Greetings. Hell, black light. Your motivator. We're gonna go black in the day. This is the late great spiritual and blood brother of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We, we call him Supreme Minister John Muhammad. Now this brother right here actually met Master Farah Muhammad, spent time studying with his brother when they were in the very beginning of Master Farah Muhammad teaching the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for three and a half years here in Detroit. Now, when this brother was alive, all the brothers that were in a particular organization, such as the Nation of Islam, the Panthers, the Gaviites, the new, the new Gavi movement, Shrine of the Black Madonna, Uh, who else? Uh, Pan Africanists. Our GB. I mean RBG. Uh, it was it. We was all hanging together. I mean. Back in those days, I was hanging with Brother Kalende, IA. We was all meeting up at the Supreme Minister John Muhammad Simple Number One here in Detroit. Even with uh, political black activists like Joanne Watkins, uh, even. Uh, John Conyers, radio personalities, uh, a black radio station owned by the name of R.J. Watkins, WHPR. Later on, uh, he owned WHPR in Island Park. I think they're still operating. And I was on that particular station. I had a program called Mind, Body, and Soul. Uh, I also hooked up with Supreme Minister John Muhammad, and we had a show together called The Journal of Truth, along with his national representative, uh, Minister. Sign me, Muhammad. I used to come on with a theme song that went like this. It was called Creator had a master plan. And through the 80s and the 90s <clears throat> and even in the turn of the century, 2000, we all would meet up somewhere uh, the new Bethel Baptist Church, Aretha Franklin's Daddy's Church. We gave hip hop conferences at the uh, Moss Number One. So we was hooking up with the hip hoppers. 
we were sticking together. We would rally to get bad meat. Uh, if Arab, so-called Arab, didn't take care of his grocery store, we were picking him, make sure he do that. Plus the police was on our side, because Detroit one time had 50% black policemen, 50% Caucasian. This was during the time of Mayor Coleman Young. We rallied uh, in Detroit to uh, get dope out the neighborhood. We would rally around a dope man's uh, trap house night and day. So people was afraid to come up. And the police, you know, they'd be walking with us. We did that several times. And sometimes Malik Shabazz, who was uh, a head of two, who, who had two organizations here in Detroit, the New Garvey Movement, he was Minister Malik Shabazz, he also knew and was acquainted with uh, Malik Zulu Shabazz. But he also was with the late great brother Khalid And uh, we would all hook up, meet up. See, brothers back in those days wasn't afraid.
Pia Sergeant Rocker. Speak to the prosecutor, whisper in his ears, and I was sitting about as far from him to that first row of chairs there, and I heard him as plain as if he was whispering in mine. He said, that one there is a wise one. Don't bother with him too much. <laughs> That's right. And I was the first one in the patrol wagon, and I was the first one he asked a question to. Do you teach about a flag other than this one, one across the water? I told him, I don't know anything about a flag but one, and that's this one. I, wa I was teaching this flag, truthfully I was. But I said it so that he could challenge me on this one. And he didn't do it neither. <laughs> he said not. Because I was clear. I was very clear. Very clear. I hadn't eaten no her. Stomach was all empty. My brain was just like that. Ready to hit him one, you know. Say something, dog. Say something. I'm ready for you. Say something. I heard you in the first place. That nothing about He like Moses said. He said, when you get ready to get out of here tonight, on the night that God lead us out, a dog won't move his tongue.